Yes, this confused phase is you. This is how your face becomes when you listen the word thermochemistry. And I am here to make you understand light and love chemistry. Hello friends, I am Dr. Hina Sheikh back with you again to clear some more basic concepts of chemistry. Our today's topic is thermochemistry. Last time we studied about thermodynamics and I am very sure you have understood it very well. Today I am going to teach you what is thermochemistry. Thermochemistry is a part of thermodynamics. We studied last time that in thermodynamics we uh, study of all the reactions, the heat changes, why the reaction goes in the forward direction, why some reaction does not go in forward direction, why some reactions happen, why some reaction does not happen. Uh, there are some heat changes associated with the reaction. So in thermochemistry what do we study? We study the heat changes which accompany chemical reactions. What do we study in thermochemistry? In thermochemistry we study the heat changes which accompany chemical reaction. Now, uh, I'll give an example. Take detergent. detergent. Detergent powder we all use at home. So, take the detergent powder on your palm of your hand. Put little drop of water, one or two drops of water. Then you can feel heat. This is because there is liberation of heat. It's an exothermic reaction, liberation of heat. On the other hand, there is a powder KNO3. If you know, you have done the experiment. If you're not done, you'll do it in the first year BSc practicals. So, KNO3 powder, potassium nitrate powder, if you keep it on your hand and you put water, you will feel that it has become cold. You will feel that coldness in your hand. Okay. So, this is where energy is absorbed. Okay. So, what do we study in thermodynamics? In thermodynamics, we study the heat changes. Either the heat is liberated or the heat is absorbed. So, that we are going to study in thermodynamics. So let us start. In thermodynamics, we study reactions. Okay, so I'm writing a reaction here. There are certain set of rules that I also explain you. Suppose carbon is there plus O2 oxygen giving you carbon dioxide. This is one reaction. Okay, this reaction is correct or wrong. This is incomplete. This is wrong. As per thermochemistry, this reaction is wrong. Why? Because many things we have missed. So, what are things you should write? First is the state. You should know the state. So, this is graphite. So, you should write here graphite. Oxygen obviously would be a gas. So, here in the bracket, you should write gas. Carbon dioxide is a gas. So, in the bracket, we write down here gas. Then you have to balance the reaction. Is it balanced? C plus O2, CO2. So, this is balanced. If the reaction is not balanced, you are supposed to balance it. Okay. And always there is some delta H associated. Delta H is change in the enthalpy, changing heat associated. So, whatever is that, we have to write out. So, for this, this 393.5 kilojoule. Don't, uh, don't worry. For all the reactions, there would be some delta H. You don't have to remember the values. Okay. I have just written it for reference, but you don't have to remember, you need not remember the values of delta H. Just remember, you have to mention delta H. Okay. So, what all things do we do? We balance the reaction. We write delta H in joules or kilojoules. Then, we also mention the temperature in kelvins. And all these things are uh, exothermic. All changes in extensive quantities means you have to write down the physical state involved. Okay, so, this is how we write down the reaction in thermochemistry. This you already know. Now, I am going to teach you enthalpy of formation, enthalpy of combustion, enthalpy of atomization. The reason why I have written all these things, three things together in one slide is, it should not happen that I teach you one and I go to the second slide and you forgot the previous one. Okay, so I'll do a comparative study of all three together. Now, first of all, what is formation? What's the meaning of formation? Formation means any compound is getting formed, one dry compound, correct? So, compound will get formed from what? Formation means compound is getting formed. Enthalpy of formation means the enthalpy change. Okay, enthalpy change when the compound is getting formed. Now, the compound will form from its what from its elements okay in natural state all the compounds are present as if as elements in the elemental form for example oxygen is present 
as O2. O2 is the elemental form. Carbon is present as graphite. Carbon is not present as diamond. Carbon is present as graphite. So carbon, graphite is the element. O2 is the element. Okay. So element means natural state में जो present होते हैं. Okay. All the compounds are present in its natural state. Those states are called as elements. So whenever a compound is formed, a compound is formed from its elements. So what is the enthalpy of formation? Enthalpy of formation is enthalpy change when a compound is formed from its elements. Okay. What is enthalpy of combustion? What is combustion? Combustion is compound. Something is getting burned. A substance is getting burned. Okay. Burned in presence of oxygen. Please remember, combustion is always in the presence of oxygen. Okay. So it is a change in enthalpy when compound is burned in presence of oxygen. And what is enthalpy of atomization? Atomization means a compound getting broken into atoms okay compound has got broken into atoms means the compound break ho gaya aur atoms ban gaye okay that is atomization formation of atoms okay so in this reaction how much is the change in enthalpy that is called as enthalpy of atomization during combustion how much is the heat change that is called as enthalpy of combustion during formation of any compound whatever is the heat change is called as enthalpy of formation Okay, now remember for each three statement we mention one mole. What do we write? One mole. Okay, for one mole of the compound we study. So for each definition we are going to insert the word one mole. Fine. So what is enthalpy of formation? Enthalpy of formation is defined as the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is formed. From its elements, what I said, enthalpy of formation is defined as the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is formed from its elements. Okay, enthalpy of formation is change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is formed from from its elements. So, what is enthalpy of combustion? Enthalpy of combustion is defined as change in enthalpy when one mole of the substance is burned completely in the presence of oxygen okay what is enthalpy of combustion enthalpy of combustion is defined as change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is burned in the presence of oxygen okay and what is enthalpy of atomization enthalpy of atomization is defined as the change in enthalpy when when one mole one mole of the compound is split completely into its atoms when one mole of the compound is split to give atoms okay so this is understood enthalpy of formation combustion and atomization there is one more thing you have to remember in each three of these is standard so how do we denote this we denote enthalpy of formation is as delta h f enthalpy of combustion as delta h c in enthalpy of atomization is delta h a okay so there is one more term here to remember is standard enthalpy of formation standard enthalpy of combustion and standard enthalpy of atomization so i'll just change the color of the pen okay so what is enthalpy of formation what is standard what is the meaning of word standard standard means at standard state we just have to insert the word at standard state now what is standard state what is standard state what is the meaning of standard standard means 25 degrees celsius and one atmospheric pressure okay so atmosphere temperature goes on changing pressure goes on changing so we keep standard temperature and standard pressure for studying any compound okay any reaction so what is the standard state standard state is 25 degree celsius temperature and one atmospheric pressure the pressure okay so you just have to insert the word at standard state in each of these three statements so let us do the definition again enthalpy of formation and standard standard enthalpy of formation is defined as the change in enthalpy when it is the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound at standard state is formed from its elements 
at standard state. Okay, so you just have to insert the word at standard state. Fine, so I repeat it again. Enthalpy of formation is defined as standard enthalpy of formation is defined as the enthalpy change when one mole of the substance, one mole of the compound at standard state is formed from its elements at standard state. Correct. Same way, let us see what is standard enthalpy of combustion. Standard enthalpy of combustion is defined as the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound is burned in the presence of oxygen. What is combustion? Burned in the presence of oxygen at standard state. Correct. So, standard enthalpy of combustion is defined as the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound at standard state is burned completely in the presence of oxygen. And what is enth standard enthalpy of atomization? Standard enthalpy of atomization is defined as the change in enthalpy when one mole of the compound at standard state okay, is split to form atoms in standard state. Correct? So my reactant also would be in standard state, product also would be in standard state. And how do we write, denote this? We denote it as just put a knot here. So we write delta H naught F. Here we write delta H naught C. And here we write delta H naught A. So standard enthalpy of formation, standard enthalpy of combustion, and standard enthalpy of atomization. I hope this is understood. I now want to start with Kirchhoff's equation. A very, very, very important question in all the exams, FY, SY, TY, Part 1, Part 2, Physical Chemistry. Okay. If you are studying thermochemistry, you cannot afford to miss Kirchhoff's equation. A very important and favorite question of the examiner is Kirchhoff's equation. Now, before I start with Kirchhoff's equation, I want some basic to be cleared. So, do you know what is heat capacity? Heat capacity has been taught to you in your lower standards, but I don't know how much you would remember now. So, I just want to explain you in short heat capacity and then I'll proceed. I'm selecting pen for writing. So, I'm teaching you first heat capacity and then I'll give you the derivation. What is heat capacity? Heat capacity is defined as the quantity of energy required, quantity of energy required to raise the temperature of the substance by 1 degree or 1 Kelvin. So, there is a substance, you want to raise the temperature of the substance by 1 degree or 1 Kelvin. For that, you have to supply some energy to the substance, correct? You will supply some energy to increase the temperature by 1 degree or 1 Kelvin. So, how much energy you supply, that energy is called as the heat capacity. Okay, so few things you have to remember about heat capacity is that first, heat capacity will differ from substance to substance. It cannot be same for all the substances. Okay, some substance will need less energy to for increase in one degrees. Some substance will need more energy to increase the temperature by one degree. Okay, it differs from substance to substance. Now this heat capacity C. It is directly proportional to the amount of the substance. Now, suppose I take small quantity of water, this much water I take. On the other hand, I take more quantity of water. Okay, I am heating both. I am heating, I have put a burner and I am heating both, which will take less energy. This will require less energy to increase the temperature by 1 degree. This here you will require more energy to increase the temperature by 1 degree again. But this will require more energy. This will require less energy. So remember the heat capacity is directly proportional to the amount. More the amount, more heat. More is the heat capacity means more energy is required. Okay. Then it is an extensive property. Since it depends on the amount, it is an extensive property. What, what are extensive properties? We have already studied in the previous presentation that extensive properties are those which depends on the amount of the matter. And the fourth point you have to remember is that Q is equal to C into delta T. 
where q is the heat required q is the heat and c is the heat capacity and t is the temperature so whenever you want to change the temperature from t2 from t1 to t2 you will have to supply some heat correct how much heat you supplied is heat capacity multiplied by delta t so i hope now you have understood what is heat capacity remember heat capacity is of two types heat capacity at constant pressure and heat capacity at constant volume so what are the two things you have to remember heat capacity at constant pressure and heat capacity at constant volume now one more thing about heat capacity you have to remember is c is equal to dq by dt rate of change of q heat with respect to temperature okay rate of change of heat with respect to temperature is your heat capacity okay this i am going to need when i am teaching you this side okay so what is c dq by dt rate of change of heat with respect to temperature is your heat capacity so what is cp cp is again dq by dt and what is cv cv is again dq by dt whereas here this would be at constant pressure and this q would be at constant volume so if your basics are clear you are you will be able to answer me what is qp heat at constant pressure what is qp heat at constant pressure and what is qv heat at constant volume it was explained to you in the class if you remember but if you don't remember let me tell you qp heat at constant pressure is equal to heat at constant pressure is equal to enthalpy okay dh by dt so instead of qp i have written dh instead of qv i am going to write du by dt so what is u it is the internal energy so both enthalpy and internal energy are nothing but the heat change one is at constant pressure and one is at constant volume okay so with this clearance of basic concepts now let us start with the derivation of kirchhoff's equation so i now start with the derivation of kirchhoff's equation you all need to pay attention here so suppose there is one equation equation a moles of a we all have studied this b moles of b giving me c moles of c plus d moles of d okay a moles of a plus b moles of b giving me c moles of c plus d moles of d where small a b c d they represent the stoichiometric coefficients and a b c d capital is my compound so what is enthalpy uh, what is uh, enthalpy of the reactant so i write h enthalpy of the reactants a is equal to something and h enthalpy of products is equal to something so what is this let us write down what is enthalpy of reactants this are the reactants okay so enthalpy of a plus enthalpy of b fine and we write here a and we write here their stoichiometric coefficient b same way enthalpy of c plus enthalpy of d again we write their stoichiometric coefficients here fine so this is enthalpy of reactants and this is enthalpy of product so what is delta h delta h is change in enthalpy delta h is equal to enthalpy of product minus enthalpy of reactants you remember delta h is h2 minus h1 wherever you write h2 minus h1 it is which function state function or path function if you remember it is called as state function which depends only on the initial and the final state and not the path followed so wherever you have delta h h2 minus h1 delta u u2 minus u1 all these things are uh, all these things are called as uh, state functions and what are path function things like work done energy these are path function which depends on the path okay so what is hp 
I just substitute from equation number one. I give this equation number two. So I'm substituting equation number two and one here. So C H C plus D H D minus I put a bracket and I write A H A plus B H B. Okay, this is the equation. Now I'm going to take derivation, derivative. In your maths classes, you have studied how to take derivative. So I take derivative of this everything with respect to t. Now I am not doing complete derivative. I am doing partial derivative. Okay, partial differentiation with respect to temperature. So if you do partial differentiation with respect to temperature. So that I'm writing here. Rho delta H by delta T is equal to delta C P. Okay, and what is this? Is sorry, this is delta triangle. Rho of delta H by delta T is delta C P. So what does this become? If this I want to take other side, it will be like. Do delta H is equal to delta C P into D T. Okay, I can write D when I am uh, differing them when I am separating them. Now I am to I have to take derivation derivative. Sorry, I have to take integration. I have already taken derivative. Now I will do integration. So I integrate. So integration with respect to delta H1, delta H2, and here also delta C P is a constant. Here I'll write integration of t1 and t2. So what do I get here? I get delta H2 minus delta H1, which is equal to delta C P t2 minus t1. And this equation is nothing. But the Kirchhoff's equation, a very very important equation which you must remember. Many numericals can be asked on this equation. Okay, many numericals can be asked on this equation. And very favorite question is the derivative derivation of how do we get the equation? So, okay, so this is all from my side, all about thermochemistry. If you have any doubt, please write down in the comment box, or you can directly ask me in the class. Do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching.